Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my frozen world this morning. I'm making some breakfast. I got my bacon cooked already, my coffee, or my sourdough bread out for my toast. And I'm frying up some potatoes and mushrooms. Yes. And I'm going to have a couple eggs. Brown, free range eggs. And, uh,. Get ready to face the day. I'm gonna step and uh, get all ready for the day. So just wanted to check in this morning and uh, gonna have a discussion today about a, a review on something that I have posted previously. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Hello, everyone. I promised you a review, uh, so this is the review. I want to talk about the uh, trip that I made up to the sugar beet harvest, working the sugar beet harvest this year. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed myself up there at the sugar beet harvest. It was a time for to disconnect from the everyday grind of owning a business. Uh, I was just able to shut all that out and just concentrate on the work that was going on there and uh, it was a good disconnect for me. Uh, I've heard people do reviews on the sugar beet harvest before and they complained about different aspects of it. but. I honestly have to say, if you had anything to complain about the work or how hard it was or your supervisors or anything like that, I'd say you pretty much was just lazy. Now it was a repetitive uh, work. It did get tiring, but it was not strenuous. Uh, the 12 hours a day did wear on you, especially toward the end of the harvest. Uh, but uh, I found the supervisors to be very likable. Uh, they tried to help you out to make your, your stay there be a successful one. Uh, of course, with, as with anything, when you have lots of people working and, and fast-paced, most of the time it's fast-paced. Sometimes toward the end it got a little slow-paced, but... Uh, you know, you get tempers, flare, miscommunication, or whatever. But it's all in how you take stuff. <clears throat> uh, would I go back and do it again? Yes. Am I going to go back and do it again? If at all possible, if I can get away from the business long enough to do it. I really like the disconnect from everything. The, uh, now, what was the thing I liked the least about it? Uh, the lack of work, at least in my position. I could complete my job in six to eight hours, but I had an eight hour, 12 hour shift. So that, I'm not a type of person that likes to sit around or just kill time. I like to be constructive and be busy when I'm at work. I guess it's probably because I own a business and I know what deadweight employees can do to you. So I didn't like it, even though I was doing my job and doing it well, I didn't like the downtime in between the time I was physically doing stuff. But I was getting paid for it, so uh, the campsite that I was at, and I can only speak of where I was at, there's other camps, it had uh, water and electricity and a sewer and at the shower it had a shower house if uh, you was in a rig that didn't have a shower they furnished a shower house and they had internet up there at the shower house free internet I had my own shower had my own internet and all that in my rig so I didn't need that um, but I, I have it wasn't beautiful the the area the landscape everything about it is not somewhere you want to go spend time 
just to be plain with you, it's ugly there in Drayton. Uh, it's not appeasing to the eye at all. Now you go south of there, you can, uh, once you get, pretty much you have to get, not much to look at south. East, over into Minnesota, becomes pretty, pretty quickly. West, you go into western part of North Dakota, it gets pretty. North, it gets pretty. You go north too much, you go into Canada. But that area right there, not much to look at. Very fertile farmland. And that's what they do there. Uh, not only did I see sugar beets being raised, but I seen soybeans, corn, wheat. I think that was pretty much the extent of what I seen. Uh, so yeah, the, the farmers up there were like major, major big farmers. Uh, the company that I was actually up there working for is owned by the farmers that grow the beets. It's a co-op, uh, Crystal Sugar Co-op. My whole experience was positive. Uh, the work could be wearing on you at times, and did, especially if you were working ground crew. I personally worked ground crew one and a half days, and then I was switched to being an oiler and greaser. Uh, and I had a lot of leeway with that job. I had a truck, company truck I rode around in. Uh, I was also trained on how to run a piler and to run a skid steer. Um, I met some interesting people. I met some people who had been doing this for a number of years. One couple had been doing it like 14 years. Uh, they were a retired couple. Both of them used to be teachers. And they were up there, had been doing the sugar beet harvest for, for I believe it was 14 years. I met travelers. I met people in the van life. I met people who living in buses. People that lived in RVs full time like I do. Um, so it's a whole class of people up there. You could not pigeonhole any one group or type of people that went up for the harvest. There was all kinds of people that went up for the harvest. As far as work camping jobs go, it's a very well paying job. You're not going to get rich going and working the sugar beet harvest every year. But uh, you can easily make between three and four thousand dollars. More if you're willing to work more. Uh, and get in up there. You won't do it your first year, but you can if you get in and work well, they have other aspects of just the normal harvest work. They have what they call a pre pile and then they have the cleanup after the harvest. So there's other, you can work longer there, you know, I mean, I'm saying two to three weeks longer probably, unless you get in on the pre-pile. Uh, basically, what I understand, pre-pile and pile is, uh, during the initial, the uh, main harvest, when you're piling all the beets, they pile up enough beets to run them through about June, and they shut it down shut the factory down and basically do maintenance and clean up on the factory for a month I think that's what I was told pretty sure I remember them saying a month and then they start harvesting and then August rolls around and they'll start being some farmers will have beets mature enough for them to actually start pulling them out of the ground so they bring in a crew it's called the pre-pile crew and all they're doing is just piling enough beets on the ground, getting beets there at the factory for them to start processing beets and making sugar again. And they do that up until main harvest. Uh, they pull approximately 10% of the beets out of the ground during pre-pile. The other 90% gets pulled out during the main harvest. That's the way I understand it. That's the way it was told to me. So. Everything we've piled on the ground during the harvest is being processed now. It'll be processed all the way up and through June. And then they should run out of beets 
And at that time they shut down for a cleanup and service of everything. Uh, where the location out of that in Drayton, the actual sugar plant was right there in Drayton. The way I understand it, there's three or four more of them sugar plants uh, throughout North Dakota and Montana. Uh, and they have pollen stations, outlying pollen stations around each plant. So I was on the main yard, but there are outlying stations. Here's the main yard. There were outlying stations around that yard, and they were putting beets and pollen them out there. And as they use them up in this yard, they'll bring them outlying beets into the yard and use them. They pile them a certain way for keeping them frozen in winter and not letting them get too hot in the hot months. Uh, once a beet goes beyond 55 degrees, it can't be piled. Uh, and if a beet is frozen, it can't be piled. So you have to. The weather can affect how much you work or how long the harvest goes. If you get a lot of days of freezing, you won't be working because you can't pile the beets while they're froze. If you get a lot of hot days, you won't be working because you can't pile the beets if they're too hot. Once they're in a pile, they can control the temperatures of them with the fans and stuff that pumps air underneath them. Uh, but they can't put them in the pile above or below a certain temperature. Uh, I know there's something that I'm missing. Like I said, I can't tell you, give you uh, how it was at other yards. I can only tell you how it was in Drayton where I was at. I say one of the downfalls where I was at was you have one little grocery store in the town of Drayton. You go to work at eight in the morning and you get off at eight at night. That grocery store actually opened nine to seven. Now they did get open up early for us and stay open later during the harvest on certain days. So you had to make sure that if you was going to the grocery store, you get there like at 7 o'clock when they had open in the morning time, get your groceries, either leave them in your truck and go to work or run back by the campsite, which was just right down the road from where you worked, drop them off and go on to work. Or make a beeline there when you got off at night because some nights they would stay open until 9 just for the harvest workers and it was appreciated but it did uh, your closest Walmart was an hour away your other grocery store of any size was another 20 minutes away in a town called Grafton Walmart was in Grand Forks so that, that was somewhat of a uh, an obstacle that had to be overcame I found it was easy to get up around 5 o'clock in the morning, go do laundry down at the laundromat, and then if the grocery store was open that morning, I'd run by there and get my grocery shopping done, drop everything back off at my camper and go to work. Uh, when I got off at night, at 8 o'clock at night, I really didn't want to go to the grocery store or do anything except take a shower and go to sleep. Uh, I did most of my cooking in the morning, make great big breakfast make my lunch and for lunch I would take stuff that I could eat throughout the day to keep fuel because though the temperature may not be super extremely cold it may be around 40 degrees there's a wind chill up there that affects you quite a bit so you eat constantly to keep the fuel burning keep it warm uh, yeah when I talk about the wind up there we're talking 10 20 mile an hour wind all the time so it's a it's different up there. Uh, now that I'm back home, and this is, I'm doing this review in December, about a week before Christmas. Every time I check the weather around here, I check what the temperature is in uh, Drayton. It gets below zero out there and stays that way for long periods of time. It can get down to below 20, negative 20. So, yeah, you're as far north as you can go without getting in Canada, just about. You're about 40 miles from Canada. I would suggest if you have your passport and you decide to go do the harvest and you are going to be stationed in Drayton, if you get there two or three days early, a good time to run up and do some sightseeing in Canada. Uh, 
if you look at some previous videos you can see that uh, I had a day off during the harvest and I went up and on the border to a little uh, on the US side it was a uh, uh, like a recreation area it was real pretty up there and that could be somewhere you go but right and Drayton there's nothing to do there's a convenience store that stays open they don't sell bread they don't sell anything except junk and some uh, like pizzas and stuff like that. Uh, which that comes in handy at eight o'clock at night. You don't feel like cooking anything. You can stop in there and get a pizza, take it back, eat it. But uh, I want to do a review, give you some information on how I felt about the harvest and how uh, how I seen it. I think it's something that uh, if you'd ever thought about doing, you ever, you know, been thinking about it, kicking it around, something you just you want to do it for a lark, do it for, it'd be a great thing to do. Uh, you're talking two to three weeks at the most. It's not like you're signing up for something that you're going to be there for six months. Uh, you do have to work while you're there, but work's never hurt anybody. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. Uh, I want to reach out to all those who may be watching the, my channel for the first time. I'd like to invite you to subscribe, share this with a friend, share this with someone who knows a work camper thinking about the sugar beet harvest or something like that. Uh, got some a couple other videos on there about the harvest and uh, encourage you to. Uh, subscribe to us we are the working man adventures and uh, we cover we do a lot of uh, adventures going out and having fun I do live in my uh, 30 foot travel trailer full time I have another 20 foot that I take out when I don't want to take my big camper out and uh, we even show a little bit of the work that we of the business that we own some of the work that we do from time to time so uh, and give us a try here at Working Man Adventures. Please subscribe, share, comment on our videos. And uh, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. And if you don't, give us a thumbs down. Thank you. And please stop by again.